Hello, this is Jared from Commit to Quality, and in today's video we're going to go over a bit of a beginner concept, which is the then command in Cypress. So the then command is basically used to return a promise, because essentially that's what Cypress commands are. They're just promises, where Cypress handles everything under the hood. Now, if you're thinking, what is a promise? Pr a promise, uh, a way to handle asynchronous tasks in JavaScript. You never really need to handle them in Cypress because it's done under the hood, but it's always good to know what they are. And one of the best examples I've ever read about this, and one that I use to teach people, is think of a promise like asking a young child can you have their toy? You can essentially send a request to the child saying, please can I have your toy after you're finished playing with it? And the child may not immediately give you the toy. You don't know when you will receive the toy. However, while the, you're waiting for them to give you the toy, you can go ahead and carry on doing something else, which in code terms is you could go on and do a different line or you can work on a different line of code. Now with promises there are three states. You've got pending which is the initial state. That means it's not fulfilled nor rejected. It's not it's not finished yet basically. You've then got the second state which is fulfilled which means the operation is completely successful completed successfully. So in our example the child has give you the toy or the third state you can have is rejected, which is the operation has failed. That could be maybe the child didn't give you the toy or they broke the toy or whatever happened. Now, under the hood, when something is pending, typically you'd need to await on it and say, okay, I'll wait for this to either hit the fulfilled or rejected state. Otherwise, you're going to be stuck in this kind of constant loop where you're continuing your code through, it's executing different lines, and everything's just pending, and everything's falling all over. Cypress handles all of that for you, which is why you don't see any kind of a wait inside your code. So that's promises. Let's move back onto the then command. So then basically allows you to work with the subject that you've yielded. So in this case, we chain in the then command onto a text box. So in the example I have here, I kind of documented and commented it all as well. But what we've basically said is we've gone to this contact form, we're entering some information into the text box. We learn all this happen first because it's doing a promise on each of the commands. So we're saying complete this, complete this, and then complete this. So what we say inside this then is we yield in the text box and we are saying get me the value of the text box. So I'm saying console.log textbox.val which is just some jQuery which will grab you the value out which we'll see in a second when I do Cypress open. Now one thing to know with then is whatever you return from the callback function will become the new subject and we're going to show an example of this in, in a little bit. Let's say npx Cypress open to see this working. You can see it's gone there, it's typing in the form. Of course, we haven't used the sci.log command, we use console.log, so we need to inspect. And you can see in the console, the testing was output because that's the name. If I rerun it, you can just see pops out again after it's added in. Now that's a basic way of using test where you're just using whatever values inside here, you're not returning anything. But with the then command, whatever's returned from the callback function becomes the new subject and will flow into your next command. That's with the exception of what we do in here where things are undefined and we're not returning anything. But I want to go through the example of returning some kind of object. Before we continue with an example of how to kind of return items from the then command and then reuse them, just want to touch on the documentation because it is really well put together. They do state here as well that you should prefer using should with a callback over the then command and this is because assertions are automatically rerun until no assertions throw whereas inside the then command it's not going to retry so you want to be careful with those differences. I will actually show you an example um, in a little bit now using an assertion and that's just to make things as simple as possible but if you actually go through the documentation we just touched upon like yielding and when you've got undefined or null versus when you're returning different objects, it'll give you a bunch of different inf it'll give you a bunch of information about kind of the different things that happen when when you return in value. So that's really good to know. But also scroll down a bit and you've got a bunch of examples of how to use the kind of then command. So I would definitely suggest after you finish watching this video, go to the documentation, have a little look through it, and see if you can kind of tailor it to any needs that might fit you in 
your testing project. So let's create a new test because that can be one just showing the basic and I'll put the link to this in the description as well. Let's say then return example. And what we'll do is we won't use the practice form. We'll go directly to commit quality, which means we're going to be, oh, of course I haven't deleted anything else. Let's just delete all this for a moment. Save that and go to return example. So we don't commit quality here. And what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to create a constant, which is going to return me all of the rows, but I'm going to use the then command to only return the top row here. And then we can perform an assertion on the top row. So let's look into doing this. By now I'm using this page so much I know uh, what values I need. So it's going to be const and we'll say, let's say top row equals side dot get. Even though I know it's probably best for me to show what I'm grabbing. So we'll go into here, let's inspect the element. And first of all, I want to get the product list table class here. I then want to dig down into the T body and TR. So that's going to return me all the table rows. So T body TR, which is all 10 rows that appear. I'm then going to chain the then command, which is returning me all of the rows. But instead of doing anything inside here, I'm going to return rows bracket zero. Oh, I forgot the brackets there. So let's just put them in. This is returning me the top row of the table. I can then work off this however I want. So I could say uh, top row dot then. Uh, now we got to remember that this is only giving me the top row. So that's the first one we see. Let's create our callback in here. And we can say expect row. Oh, if I could spell expect row to have text and I'm not exactly sure what the text should be so let's just put this for now which is going to fail there we are it's telling us this is the text we want so then return example so in this one we return in the top row for us and then inside this call which is this top row dot then we'd assert in that the text is what we expect. If you want to change this to be different rows, you could say row one, which is going to be the second. And of course, we're expecting a failure because the product ID and name and price, basically everything is different. So you can see here that now it's returning that row. So we're working off the object that has been returned in this first constant. So that's how you can store things into constants and reuse them or whatever. But if you go back to my chaining video, you don't need to do this. We could say, side.get here then rows because tell us just keep that down for a minute because we are returning rows here we can then just chain off this because then it's chainable if we go type definition you can see here it's chainable so we can work with whatever's yielded from this so this point if we do another then and we say row and create our callback this is exactly what we've just done with the with the constant down here, but instead we chain it all together into one kind of smooth flow. So we can hit send on this, save on this, go to playground and you can see everything's passing. It's got it. And then the TP yielded is being checked for us. So in this video then, we've gone over the basics of the then command, how we can use it to grab values from text boxes. You can do the same like grabbing text from buttons or whatever else you want to do. We've also shown how you can change and return the object that you want to do from the then command. So in this case, we got a list of table rows. We returned the first one and then we did an assertion on it. In this one, we showed also how we could create constants and then reuse them across our tests as well. So hopefully that's providing you with a solid understanding of using then. As always, if you do have any questions, please drop a comment down below. A like and subscribe is appreciated. Thanks for watching.